As people, we like to feel included. We like to be part of the popular group. We like to hang out with our friends and be included in their plans. We like to know the gossip and dirty secrets going around the friend group. We just want to be part of the fun. And I've gotten a few comments from you guys asking me about the fear of missing out, also known as FOMO, which is basically not being included, or fear, rather, of not being included. This is a very real and prevalent phenomenon in our species. We've probably experienced this stuff ever since the primal stage because missing out in the primal days probably meant that you were going to die. So we have it ingrained in our DNA at this point. We in general do not want to miss out on things, at least the things that we want to be part of. Now the difference with the fear of missing out is that you might be afraid to miss out on absolutely anything. You might not even really want to go out with your friends tonight, but you still go because you're afraid of missing out on what potentially could happen. And the fear of missing out is especially prevalent when you're in school, say elementary school, middle school, high school, anything in between. But I have a prime example of my high school years and the fear of missing out. So when I was in high school, I was part of the bowling team. Now, bowling was a varsity sport in my high school. I know, I got very lucky, and it was very fun to be a part of. But as fun as it was, there was a group of kids the first couple of years that were part of a clique. They were, they all kind of hung out with each other and it was hard to really be part of the joke or cut in on the fun, you know? And I tried, of course, I tried to be their friends and I tried to be more part of the group, but it just never really happened. I don't really know the semantics, whether they didn't like me enough or I wasn't funny enough or whatever the fuck it was at the time. I don't really care. The point I'm trying to make is I didn't fit in. And in that sense, I missed out on a lot of things and I was didn't want to be missing out on those things because I liked those people to an extent. But later on in life, I realized that it didn't really matter because I didn't like them enough to the point where I wanted to be their best friends. I just wanted to be included in whatever they were doing. And this was really evident when I attended a pasta party they were having. Now, if you don't know what a pasta party is, it's just a party where you have a lot of pasta. There's really not much to it. But the whole bowling team was there, and we all were hanging out. And I actually got to be part of the group for once. I got to be part of the cool kids or the function or everything that they were doing. And I found out it wasn't really all that. It was just a small get-together the kids, while they were friends and all, didn't seem to have that much in common. And even the stuff that they had in common with each other, I didn't really have in common with them. So it was kind of like, oh, I was afraid of missing out on this because why? I didn't care in the end. In the end, it didn't matter. I didn't, I didn't want to be part of it. I didn't realize I didn't want to be part of it, but it ended up not wanting to be part of it. Now, this could have gone a different way, of course, but it goes to show that you don't have to be part of every event slash function. You don't have to always hang out with your friends. You don't always have to do what everybody else is doing. You can miss out on a few things and you'll be fine. Trust me. I'm not saying miss out on everything, but it's okay to not go out with your friends once in a while. It's okay to decide to stay in and watch a movie instead. It's okay to not go to this big party because you feel tired. It's okay to work on your passion project instead. The one thing about missing out on things is that you sometimes miss out on things that you actually want to miss out on and get to do something that you know you like or get to do something else instead. I think a general rule that I have when it comes to these things is I don't attend events or I don't ask to be invited to things I'm not invited to. At the most, I'll maybe ask about the event that is happening. So let's say, let's say my friends Josh and Steve are on their way to a bar and they start talking about it openly. I'm going to say, oh, which bar are you going to? And they might say, oh, we're going to this bar and just leave it there. I'm not going to really ask to tag along because I wasn't invited. Now, it's not a great thing to talk about your plans with somebody else in front of other people, but it happens sometimes. Now, if on the other hand, I ask, oh, which bar are you going to? They might say, oh, we're going to so-and-so bar, would you like to come with? Then I'll say, oh, sure, because I was invited, okay? I was invited to the outing, I was invited to the cookout, as they say, and it's fine and it's comfortable and you don't have to bother. Whereas if you kind of ask, like, oh, can I come along? They might not really want you to come along and say, oh, uh, sure. That, to me, is ten times worse than not being invited. Because not only are you not invited, they are indirectly saying to you, oh, well... We didn't really want you there, but I guess you can come. It just makes you feel bad about yourself. It makes you feel like you're a burden. It makes you feel like they really don't want to hang out with you. Whereas if you use my method and ask them specifics about the outing and then they invite you to come with, then everything is fine because you didn't ask them to be part of the thing. You kind of just asked out of curiosity. 
and then they might think, oh, wait, this guy actually should come with us. Why didn't we invite him? Or whatever else could be going in their head, and they ask you. And it feels good because you didn't have to make things unnecessarily uncomfortable. And you don't really have to apply this method to everyone. Like, if it's your best friend in your inner circle, you don't really have to do all that. But I like to do it because I think it works regardless of the group you're in. But let's say in this hypothetical that I didn't get asked to go hang out with them at the bar. They might be going to the bar and hanging out for a very specific reason. They might have to talk about something important. They might have to discuss something about work that is confidential. They might want to watch pro golfing game and know that I don't wanna watch pro golfing. Or there could be a myriad of other things. It really doesn't matter, okay? Because it's none of your business why they're hanging out or the fact that they wanna hang out by themselves. And I have another prime example of this with my previous job with my ex-bosses. I would be in Discord calls with them all the time. And sometimes they would ask me to leave and say, look, we have to discuss something in private. Could you please step out for a bit? And of course I would. It's none of my business most of the time. It might've been business or in cases where they were laughing, it might've been something private about one of them. And I didn't know them that well. Now, did I wanna know what they were talking about? Of course I wanted to know what they were talking about. Did I ask them sometimes? Most of the time, no, unless they were trying to prank me and I knew it or something like that. And on the other side of that coin, there's things that I wouldn't tell them because I wasn't that great friends with them, right? There's things that I wouldn't share with them or wouldn't really feel like talking to them about because I had a different friend group for it. I have friends that I like to hang out with on one day and I don't like to hang out with on the other day. I have different friend groups for different things. Like I have a couple of friends where I'll say, oh, you know, we should go to the bar. And I have other friends that I'll say, we should game. Because I know that I like doing one thing better with one group of people, and I like doing the other thing better with the other group of people. It doesn't really have to be that deep. I remember I had a friend in college who had a massive FOMO. Like she would do everything. She would go to, like she would go to the student government meetings. She would go to, let's say, I don't know, engineering club. She would go to Bible study for whatever I care. She would go to everything. And what started happening was she had no time for herself. She was bored with most of the things she was doing and eventually stopped doing anything because nothing was interesting to her anymore because she did too many things that she didn't want to do. So she was like, what's the point of me going out and doing another thing I don't like? And that's because she tried to do everything with her friends, roommates, whatever, because she didn't want to not be part of the equation. She wanted to feel included. Well, here's what happens when you're too included. You get dragged into things that you don't necessarily want to. You might sign up for a gym membership with your friend because you think you want to go to the gym, but in reality, all you want to do is say that you work out and that you're working out with your friend. And then you stop going to the gym because, oh, the novelty's worn off and you don't really want to go. You just wanted to kind of feel included. Well, now you're paying for a gym subscription that you're going to have to pay a stupid amount of money to cancel. It's funny to think about because that's one of those issues where people overcommit too much. We all like to talk about the fact that this generation doesn't like to commit to things. Well, there's people in this generation that like to overcommit to everything and then end up committing to nothing. In general, don't be afraid of missing out on things, especially things you're not invited to, especially things that you don't think you even really want to do. Now, what I will counter with is if you're feeling that you're missing out on your friend group and your friend group is not inviting you to anything, like anything at all, then I would say, okay, I'm missing out. This is annoying. But at the same time, that just means that you really shouldn't be hanging out with them, okay? Because if you're missing out on all of their events and their stuff, start inviting them to things, okay? Let's say you want to go to a cafe and just hang around for a bit, okay? If you invite those friends of yours and they say, oh, I'm busy and this and that, that's okay the first time. The second time, it's a little annoying. The third time, well, you just don't ask them again and find different friends. Because if they're not inviting you to their events and they're not coming to your events, that means that they probably don't want to hang out with you anymore. And it's a harsh truth that you're going to have to accept. Now, you could confront your friends about this. I did make a whole video about confrontation the other day. Go watch that as well. You could confront them and say, what the fuck? And from there, you go and figure out what's going on. But if it's just occasional events and occasional things that are happening, don't be afraid of missing out, okay? Now, I want to bring your attention to another side of FOMO. There is a side of FOMO that's actually a great motivator. So let's say, for example, you heard that your friend works at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Now, for those of you who don't know, Madison Square Garden is this huge stadium where all kinds of sporting events, concerts, and other things happen. So let's say your friend works there, and by working there, this friend gets all these perks, maybe free tickets to certain events, maybe they get to have free parking in New York City or something. There could be a myriad of things. And maybe they brag about this to you once in a while. This might make you say, damn, I want to do that. I want that job. That sounds sweet. That might motivate you into trying to figure out the best way to get this job because of the perks and the things that you can do at said job. 
Maybe it incentivizes you to do research faster to achieve that goal. Or maybe it incentivizes you to ask that friend for a reference and say, hey, could you put in a good word for me to your bosses? Maybe I could also get a job there. It could be any number of things. But there are positives to the fear of missing out. But don't try too hard and think of those positives because in general, I think it just causes more anxiety and distress rather than a hunger for, I guess, achieving a goal. There's always other things to do or that you might rather be doing. Now, if you really struggle with the fear of missing out, like it's not that simple for you to just get over, you might want to consider where this stems from. It might have come from your childhood, from actually missing out on things all the time because of different factors, whether it be your parents not being able to afford a field trip or your friends not really being your best friends, or it could be something completely different, right? You might just have this genetic predisposition to fear of missing out. That's one of those things that you might want to consider consulting a therapist or some licensed medical professional about because it's not always that simple of an answer. In any case, don't be afraid to miss out on things, okay? I'm sure you have other things to worry about, but that's all for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, good night and good luck, everybody.